Our last topic for today is uh, about a gentleman named Ronald Green, uh, who is another victim of police brutality He uh, back in 2019. So that's where this story starts. Uh, there was a violent arrest. It was a, a particularly brutal violent arrest after a high-speed chase um, of, uh, of Ronald Green uh, that involved three Louisiana state police officers. And uh, you had a Democratic governor, Democratic governor in Louisiana, that basically hid um, all of this stuff. Right. The official narrative was that he died in a car wreck. He died on impact when the when the police cruiser hit his car during a high speed chase. That is not what happened. The body cam footage was not going to be released um, again, claiming that, oh, it will. Um, it'll taint the investigation. We've heard this before. That's what happened in North Carolina uh, with um, uh, in Andrew Brown Jr. I believe the gentleman's name is. Um. Yeah, he, they, they wouldn't release the body cam footage. And basically all that means is, hey, we know the cops fucked up. We know the cops murdered this guy. We don't want to show it because it's going to it's going to incriminate the cops. In retrospect, what we'll do is we'll release the footage and be like, boy, you know, this was bad. This was really bad. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Please give me your votes. That's you. That's really what we're going to what we're going to see. Um, Ronald Green was, uh, he was pulled over for, for speeding, um, panicked and fled. Uh, and he eventually pulled over after, after the cop car hit his car, he pulled over on a country highway, uh, and the police came out of their cruiser and they said, why are you running? We just pulled you over for speeding. And he constantly kept saying, well, I'm scared. I'm afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared. Like he kept saying that. Over and over again. Uh, there were two troopers who pulled him over initially, uh, DeRoss and Hollingsworth. Uh, and, um, you know, again, they kept asking, like, why? And he kept saying he was scared. And that's a fair statement to make, considering, you know, how many innocent black people we've seen killed for virtually no reason by various police officers. I mean, I get terrified when I get pulled over, uh, not only because I'm might get stuck with a ticket I can't afford, but you know, who knows, is this cop going to be, uh, you know, has an itchy trigger finger and I reach for my fucking, uh, uh, registration and he goes, uh Oh, and pop, pop, pop. I don't know. I got a beard. I'm Brown. I don't know what they think I am. You know, they're, they're conditioned to think everybody is the enemy. That's part of their training. They're part of their training says, uh, everybody that isn't wearing, uh, the, 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 the blue and the badge and the, and all the, all the cop stuff is an enemy. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're what their society is dredges. So yeah, I mean, I get fucking nervous again anytime I see a cop around, you know, so that totally checks out. So the troopers then started going in very aggressively, you know, he hands up and all that and, uh, and they, uh, tased them. They they knocked him to the ground. Uh, they started beating the shit out of him. They called him a son of a bitch. They called him a motherfucker. They repeatedly tased him. And then Hollingsworth uh, choked him, you know, which is banned. They're not supposed to do that. Even I, I mean, even it, it doesn't even matter whether it was part of the rules or not. Like, do you really feel like a, like you need to choke this guy out who isn't doing anything, who isn't acting violently, who's just sort of minding his own fucking business and and. Yeah, he fled. He fled. But again, fleeing for speeding. Does that really need somebody being tased, beaten and choked on the ground? The reaction doesn't match what's going on. A third trooper shows up and then uh, this third trooper, after they have handcuffed his hands and his ankles, starts wailing on green as well. And then at the end of all this, you know, they leave him bleeding on the ground, handcuffed in the prone position, which means his face is pressed up against the ground. Um, you know, it, we all know that that sort of stuff restricts breathing. We just saw that with the with with George Floyd. 
Uh, and again, this goes against the argument that Democrats and Republicans like to make that, oh, Derek Chauvin is the odd man out. He is the bad cop. We got the bad apple. We got him out of the force, which means that now you can trust all cops. No, you can't. Look at what's going on right here. You didn't get rid of the bad. You didn't get rid of shit. The infection is the system. The whole body is shutting down and you're like, I popped a pimple. So I think we're good, right? We're, are we all right? I feel like we're good. So, you know, and think and this, that's, that's not even where the story ends, right? So the ambulance finally does arrive. Um, and instead of worrying about, you know, giving him emergency procedure, doing their jobs as paramedics, these paramedics were more concerned about the cops handcuffing him to the gurney. And during that process, Ronald Green passes away from being tased, beaten, and um, uh, asphyxiated several times. And the medical reports were also falsified in this situation. So the body cam footage is not released. The body cam footage is, is uh, was only leaked. It was leaked by the AP. The AP leaked the body cam footage, right? Uh, and uh, in, in 2020, in September of 2020, um, Hollingsworth is let go. So he, uh, almost a year after this thing happens, he's let go, um, makes a statement about like how awful it was that we beat this guy. And then he dies in a mysterious car accident, which some people are saying was suicide because he just couldn't bear what happened. The medical reports are falsified. The doctors at the emergency room were like, yo, you guys said that he died on impact after you hit his car. Um, yeah, none of that checks out. There's no way that that's what this dude died of. Also, the car seems to be kind of fine. So what the fuck are you guys talking about? The official report from the, I, I guess, the coroner's office says that it was a cocaine-induced agitated delirium which is not a real condition recognized by the American Medical Association. So basically, they're, they're like, what if we use racism as our excuse for cause of death? What if, what if we just say some racist shit and people will believe it? Oh, black people do drugs. Let's just fucking reemphasize that a thousand times. Cocaine-induced agitated delirium. Doesn't that just sound like a made-up thing? It just sounds like a made-up thing. When they looked at the body cam footage, too, it shows that they, while he was face down on the ground, they pepper sprayed him. So if you want to, you know, make it harder for him to see and breathe after you've beaten the shit out of him and tased him, yeah, let's let's go ahead and pepper spray him to to, you know, literally add salt to the wound. Because you know that shit was awful. There's no way it wasn't. So right now, the DOJ did pretty much nothing. Um, they're, they're still claiming that, you know, they can't officially release the fucking body cam footage. Because again, it, it, it ensures that these cops are guilty. It guarantees that these cops are guilty. Just like the North Carolina footage showed. Just like the footage of Derek Chauvin showed. Just like every other fucking cop that shoots an innocent person because that's what they're fucking trained to do. Their de-escalation is not talking to people. Their de-escalation is drawing their weapon and blam, blam, blam. That's their de-escalation training. The unions in Louisiana are staying silent because uh, they've poured money into this Democrat governor and they would like to see him get reelected. So the unions aren't going to do the right thing and say, hey, yeah, I know I've donated a whole bunch to you, but this is fucked and we don't want to donate to you anymore unless you release the, the footage, unless you aid the investigation and these cops are fired. They're not planning on doing any of that sort of stuff. 
the governor claims that if that that now that this has been leaked, oh well, the investigation is now part partial and partisan. The justice system is is oh man, we can't we can't get a good verdict. It's a mistrial because uh, we release video footage that clearly shows that these cops beat the shit out of an innocent man and killed him. Oh man, what? Oh, it's so it's such it's such partial evidence. Yeah, partial to what? The truth. Partial to getting these fucking cops off the streets. Partial to making sure that another innocent black person that is killed in this country gets justice. It's partial to the facts and the truth. And if you were if you were a fucking government official, if you were a politician, if you were a leader that's worth your fucking salt, then you would release that footage and say, you know what? These cops fucked up but you are not. Why? Because you need the police union support to get reelected. And any other union that is donated to you, any other union that has funneled its members into the Democratic Party, a party that has never supported the working class person, also will not say dick all. Which means what? It means that rank and file safety committees are the only way to go in order to organize the working class. And they need to be in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. That's what that means. But this is another, another, and, and this story was covered up, and they're doing it again in North Carolina. It's the exact same thing. They won't release the footage, but the footage very clearly will show that this that that uh, uh, Andrew Brown Jr. was executed, just like Ronald Green was. That's what that'll show us. All right. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Looking at a few comments. Oh, oh, okay. Holly was talking about the Nazi experiments earlier. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Um, Amanda Diallo was reaching for a wallet. Philando Castile had his hands up. Philando Castile also said he was a registered gun owner. Uh, Holly points out Philando Castile. Uh, Philando Castile also says that he was a registered gun owner. He was a registered gun owner. Um, and he said, I'm reaching to, you know, get my license and registration. There's a gun, you know, I'm going to, there's a gun in there. I'm a registered owner. I'm not reaching for the gun. It doesn't matter. Blame, blame. I mean, the second he was like, I'm reaching over. There's a gun in that thing. I'm not going to get the gun. I'm getting reach over to grab my documents. He reaches over. Blame my blood. That's because the system says anybody that isn't part of the badge and gun is, is, is a threat. Oh, also black people are like a double extra threat. Cynical girl says shoot first. Fuck questions. Exactly. Yeah. Ho Holly agrees. Yes, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly how they do this shit. And the politicians are covering them up. So remind me again why the fuck we're voting for Democrats. When Democrats are covering this shit up. Amy Klobuchar, the D, who is a DA in Hennepin County, covered up all the shit that Derek Chauvin did. Remind me again why we why should we should have voted for her. I literally had a guy said, oh, well, she's great. I love the fact that she is a loose cannon that will eat a salad with a comb and freaks the fuck out on what? Why do people want sociopaths in office? That 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 is a question I I just will never fucking understand. I shoot first fuck questions kind of really nails down what the uh, what the cops go through, it, or or what the cops uh, policy is. Sorry. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. 
You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.